His banner over me is love. He brought me to the banqueting. His banner over me was love. Song 2 verse 4 We have already seen how Jesus brought us into his Father's house. We are there with him in the heavenly places at the right hand of God the Father. In the wilderness, when the Lord organized the people into an army, he placed four banners over them. The three tribes which camped on the east side, the banner that was over them was that of the lion. The three tribes which camped on the south side, the banner over them was the ox. The three tribes which camped on the west side, the banner over them was the man. The three tribes which camped on the north side, the banner over them was the eagle. They all served God as they were instructed by Moses. The book of the Song of Solomon is called by the Jews the Holy of Holies. It talks about the intimacy, the communion the Messiah or Christ has with his bride. It shows the heart of the Christ toward his bride. Jesus, our Messiah or Christ, is our Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9 verse 6 Our Prince of Peace is telling us that I want you to know Though all the other banners are over you, lion, ox, man, eagle, but the banner that I, your Prince of Peace, have placed over you is love. My friends, we need to get it right from the beginning. The first banner that God has placed over us and that will forever be over us is love. The agape kind of love which compelled our Prince of Peace to lay down his life for his bride. Many waters cannot quench that love, nor can the floods drown it. This love of the Prince of Peace for us, no man on earth has ever experienced it. If a man would have to love the way the Prince of Peace loved us, that man would be utterly despised. For the Prince of Peace gave all the wealth of his house to redeem or ransom in full his bride. Song 8 verse 7 Although he was rich, yet for the sake of his bride, that is you and me, he became poor. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 He literally forfeited everything. Brothers and sisters, I beseech you to study the love of God, not your love for him, but his love for you. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John 4 verse 10 Yes, the peace that we now enjoy is because God so loved us. Many of us boast about our love for God when it ought to be the other way around. We did not love him, but he first loved us. God only has the agape kind of love, an unconditional love, a love that compels one to lay down his life for a friend, even for a stranger. For scarcely for a righteous man or woman will one die, yet peradventure meaning perhaps, for a good man or a good woman, some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5 verse 6 to 8 A prince of peace who will die for an ungodly person like me, it is too much. I did not deserve it. I did not do anything special. It is simply because he loved me, and he demonstrated his unconditional love for me by dying on the cross on my behalf. Many people will love you only when we meet their criteria. They will ask you to clean yourself before they accept you into their fellowship. They will tell you, you have the wrong background, you are from the wrong side of town. But our Prince of Peace says, come just the way you are. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 28 when people do not know and believe the love that God has for them, they struggle in their Christian walk. They believe that God has brought them into the kingdom only to serve and to fight. Many times people will think that because they are involved in one activity in the church, that God loves them more or less if they are doing nothing. 
They try so hard to love God by their good deeds, when it is the other way around, not that we loved God, but God loved us. And many times we feel like we are only being used by God, that God called us into the kingdom so that we can become part of his army, so that we can serve under one of the four banners, lion, ox, man or eagle. John tells us, we have known and believed the love that God has for us, 1 John 4 verse 16. So I implore you to study the love that God has for you and not the other way around, and once you have studied it, I beseech you to believe it. Jesus reassures you and me that the same love with which God loved him is the same love God has for you and me, John 17 verse 23. God is love, 1 John 4 verse 8. He does not have love, but he is love. He has armies, he is the Lord of hosts. Jesus is the commander of the hosts of the Lord, Joshua 5 verse 14. He is over the hosts of heaven and the hosts of Israel, but he is love. He so loves you, and his banner over us is love. I was in a church and the pastor said those who are saved when they are no longer strong like young men and women and those who come to Christ when they are jobless are liabilities for the kingdom of God. They should have come to God when they were still young and not sick and when they were working. For then they would have been assets for the kingdom. They would have worked in the church and they would have gone on to evangelism and they would have contributed financially to the church. And another said, when you give your life to Christ, when you are old, it is only a half soul that is saved, because you are saved but your life is wasted. But when you give your life when you are young, not only your soul is saved but your life is not wasted, so you can serve the Lord and give financially to the church. It did not bear witness with my spirit. I went to God and asked him, what is your heart about this subject? I know we all wish that we were all born into a Christian family, that we never backslid, but it is not the case sometimes. I knew that some people in that church who had a background of alcoholism and gave their lives to Christ when they were jobless and almost 60 years old were feeling guilty because they blamed and condemned themselves for staying all those years in the world. Let us look at the case of the thief crucified with Jesus. His life was over. He did not even serve God for a second on earth, but he cried out to the Lord. He said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you today, You shall be with me in paradise. Luke 23 verse 42 to 43. Jesus did not tell him, it is only a half soul, your life is wasted, you are of no use to me. There are many sermons behind the pulpits that appeal to the flesh. When we are self-righteous, we enjoy that kind of preaching because we have always been in church, but it is not the heart of Jesus. Even when you have only one second left to live, call upon the name of the Lord and he will answer. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 The thief on the cross had no money to give to the church of God, but Jesus did not tell him that he was a liability. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years had spent all her livelihood on the physicians. When she came to Jesus, she had no money to put into the ministry of Jesus, like the other woman that blessed the ministry of Jesus with their substances. Mark 5 verse 25 to 34 Jesus never said to the woman with the issue of blood, You are a liability. You should have come to me when you were healthy, when you still had your money so that you could support my ministry like Joanna, Susanna and the other women are ministering to me with their substance. Luke 8 verse 2 to 3 No matter how long you've been out there in the world, or how many times you have backslid, or how old you are, or how sick you are, or how broke you are, come. God says come. I will heal your backsliding. I will love you freely, for my anger is turned away from you. 
Hosea 14 verse 4. God does not love us because of the money we bring to the church or all the activities we do in church or how hard we think we are working for Him. He loves us freely. Isaiah says of Jesus, our Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9 verse 6, A bruised reed he shall not break, and the smoking flax he shall not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Isaiah 42 verse 3 The prophet depicts the heart of the Messiah. A bruised reed he shall not break. A reed is a common name of many aquatic plants, most of them large grasses with hollow jointed stems, and one example of a reed is the bamboo. In the day of Isaiah, reeds were used for instruments of music, piped instruments. If the reed is bruised, crushed, hurt or broken by a blunt or heavy instrument, it was useless. It could no longer be used as a musical instrument. Many times we come to God, we cannot do anything, we know nothing, and we can do nothing. When we are baby Christians, we are not of much value to God. We still need to be fed with milk, we need to be taught how to pray, how to praise, how to serve, and sometimes it takes a long time before we can help someone else, or pray for someone else, or feed someone else. Many times also we are sick and cannot be of much help to church activities, or we are poor and cannot really help the church financially. In a way we are useless and worthless in the eyes of men, like that bruised reed. Men could not use it to make their pipe musical instrument. But Jesus, our Prince of Peace, does not see us like the world sees us. He came to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken-hearted, Luke 4 verse 18. So, if you ever feel like that bruised reed that your life has been crushed, your heart has been broken by heavy burdens, that you lost all your money and wasted your life, Jesus came for you and He is not blaming you at all for your past life. He is glad that you are finally home. He said the smoking flax he will not quench, or the smoking wick of a candle he will not quench. What they called candle was more of a lamp, the wick was dipped into the oil. When the flax or the wick of the candle was smoking, it meant that the light was about to go out. The smoke irritates the eyes of the people in the room and causes them to cough. The smoke is offensive to people in the room. So, when it happened, the people quenched the flame on the flax, for the oil is used up. Many times in a church setting or among believers, when we see a brother or a sister who started the Christian journey well, had the anointing to use religious terms, and their light was shining, and all of a sudden the brother or sister backslides or sins, we give them no room for repentance. We just cut them off because they are an offense to us, because they embarrass us and they embarrass everybody around us who is a Christian. So we expel them from our congregation. But our Messiah will not quench a smoking flax, no matter how offensive it has become to his kingdom. But if the person is willing to repent, he will trim his wick and add some more oil in his lamp so that his light will shine and men would see it and glorify God. Peter was once a smoking flax. Jesus even told him, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense unto me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. Matthew 16 verse 23 Even before Jesus went to the cross, Peter denied Jesus publicly. No matter how much a smoking flax Peter was, and all the disciples, Jesus did not quench their flax. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan is designed to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee that your faith fail not, and when you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. Luke 22 verse 31 to 32. Jesus came back after his resurrection and restored Peter who denied him and all the other disciples who were scattered from him. I thank God that there is room for repentance in Christ Jesus. 
Does it mean that we should backslide so that Jesus could heal our backsliding? Certainly not, for Jesus Christ has overcome the world and has now empowered us to reign in life with him. Chapter 6 Perfect Love Casts Out Fear When we know that the Prince of Peace has placed his banner of love over us, we are empowered to serve him acceptably. We have already established why we should not be afraid of the fiery wrath of God or the judgment of God, for Christ Jesus is our peace offering and our propitiation. We need to study more about the love that God has for us. John tells us, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4 verse 17 God so loved us that he did not just save us, but made us heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. We did not do anything to deserve it. It has been imputed unto us. His holiness has now been imputed unto us. So has his righteousness, wisdom, love, peace, authority, power, and glory been imputed unto us. Perfect love is the love that God has for us and not the love that we have for God. The love that God has for us will never fail. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8 There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. 1 John 4 verse 18 The reason why we have peace in our hearts and are not afraid is because we have known and believed the love that God has for us. That is why we can shake off the condemnation and the guilt the enemy is throwing at us. Day and night the enemy is bombarding us with sin and the curses of the law so that we will hide from God and reject the knowledge of the sacrifice of Jesus as our peace offering. The enemy will tell us that we have not done enough for God. The truth is, even if we bestow all our wealth to the poor, it will never match up with how much God loved us and has done for us. The love that I have for God has been shed abroad or poured out in my heart when I received the Holy Spirit. Romans 5 verse 5 We love God because He first loved us. 1 John 4 verse 19 Everything we do in the kingdom is the love of Christ in us that constrains us or compels us to do so, because we say within ourselves, if he died for us to demonstrate how much he loved us, we ought at least to follow in his footsteps. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 God is at work in us through the Holy Spirit, both to will and do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2 verse 13 so I stop comparing myself with other believers, but only with my elder brother Jesus Christ. Whether they pray more than I, or fast more, or read more, or have the greater church attendance, or all the other things that Christians ought to do, I know that I am freely loved by God. All these things I do them, but they do not commend me to God. He loved me even when I was a sinner. It does not mean that I am a lazy Christian. God knows that I, Jerry, am not. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Romans 5 verse 9 to 10 so when I sleep, I have no fear, for I am reconciled with God. I am not his enemy any more. I do not fear his wrath, for I am at peace with God. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 verse 39 When we say we truly love God, we will keep his commandments. Jesus tells us, If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15 If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. John 15 verse 10 
John tells us, And by this we know that we have known him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I have known him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 1 John 2 verse 3 to 4 for when a person does not keep the commandments of God, but practices sin, his conscience will be accusing him and his heart condemning him. Romans 8 verse 1 and Romans 2 verse 15 But if we keep the commandments of God and do the things that please him, we have the petition of whatever we ask. John tells us the secret, saying, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. 1 John 3 verse 20 to 22